Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome. Today, I have uh, Fernando Raul of Fernando Raul Astrology on, and we're going to do a series of videos on how to make your screen bounce up and down. <laughs> <laughs> I just kicked the table. But we're going to do a series of videos on uh, relationship compatibilities and a few main things that you can look at uh, in terms of relationship compatibility in order to do a quick look at compatibility without going through the, uh, the whole process of going in depth, which going in depth is good too. But if you're wanting to do a quick look at compatibility from the Vedic perspective, uh, through looking at the natal moons of each individual, we're gonna give you a few guidelines of how to do that uh, involving nakshatras and, uh, and other factors. And so Fernando, what do you wanna tell people today? Well, first of all, I want to thank you, Michael, for inviting oh, me pleasure. to your channel. Yes. It, it, it's, it's been, uh, we've been working on this for a while, so um, I'm very glad to be here. And um, I hope uh, this is uh, the first of many videos that we do. And today we're going to be talking about uh, a famous dosha called uh, Raju dosha. Not Rahu dosha, Raju <laughs> dosha or Raju dosha. Uh, for those who do not know Sanskrit, like myself, uh, dosha means like a flaw and Raju means a rope. And basically this is a, a small uh, nugget of knowledge that you can use in terms of knowing uh, an obstacle that can come up in terms of synastries and relationship astrology. Remember, when you are doing synastries from the Vedic perspective, from the Jyotish perspective, what you're doing is comparing the Janmas Nakshatras of, of both people who are in a relationship. And for those who do not know what a Janma Nakshatra is, is basically the Nakshatra of birth, which corresponds to the natal Nakshatra where your moon is. So basically what the Indian Jyotishis have done for centuries now is that whenever people are gonna get married, they see their horoscope and they see the compatibility the potential compatibility between people to see if the marriage will work or not. And remember, the idea of the Vedic synastry is uh, the idea of making the marriage last. That is the main idea, making it last, uh, making it happy, and obviously having children. So that is something very important that we must remember, uh, that sometimes, uh, you know, modern uh, Western people that want to have synastries of their boyfriends or girlfriends that they just met uh, sometimes don't uh, know. Yeah, you're going to say. Oh, I, I was just going to say, you know, and what do you, what do you think of telling people uh, in regards to when you're looking at the horoscope and you're not really seeing the compatibility that's there. Do you, feel, do you feel that that means the two people should not be together? Under yeah, they should not be together. My, oh, experience, really? my, my limited experience is that they should not be together unless you are masochistic. <laughs> <laughs> or unless you're which, ready, you're which, ready by to the way, which, which, by the way, there's a lot of people out there who are masochistic, who are addicted to drama. So that is just part of life, right? But I mean... Remember, these techniques are for a uh, functional uh, marriage, a marriage that lasts a traditional marriage, right? Where a man has his role and a woman has his ro her role and both uh, have a family nucleus and they have children and they have a home and all that. But I would recommend people uh, not to marry, not if they have this Rayu dosha, if they have several doshas, right? And if there are several things indicating that they should not get married because they don't have a compatibility, they should not. Now, this is important. If you have Rayu Dosha, that doesn't mean that you should not get married. No. What it means is that there's going to be something present that might uh, create some sort of difficulties to certain degrees. But what I mean here is that if you have Rayu Dosha, if you have Veda Dosha, if you don't have Shridiga, if you don't have Mahendra, if you have 13 in Ashtakuta, if you have a lot of bad uh, grades in terms of these uh, sinistry techniques, then you shouldn't get married unless you want to have a bad time and have a lot of drama, which, as I said before, some people like that. So that is my opinion. And remember, I am an astrologer. I am not a professional uh, marriage counselor. So that is what I can say about it. <laughs> right, right. And if he was a professional relationship counselor, folks, he would be telling you to get involved in those relationships 
so that he could <laughs> have as much business from you as he possibly Definitely. could. Definitely. No, o- o- only kidding. But you know, here's something that that I find because I do find these techniques will also work uh, yeah. for people in relationships as well. And I like the fact that you that you touched on the doshas themselves, saying if you have several of the doshas, yes, it can make the compatibility difficult. But I find it can also work in any relationship scenario if you're wanting to know whether you're wanting to go into the relationship or not. But what I often like to tell people is also I find sometimes there are two people in terms of relationship that are just meant to connect with each other. You're meant to connect, you have karma to complete with the person. So sometimes there's a lot of love that's there in the connection through some of the other compatibility things I have found. And so then it makes it so that those two people, they might benefit from each other's uh, partnership, right? Yes. But there may be difficulty. It's all just a question of whether you want to go through the difficulty or whether you're more comfortable not going through the difficulty. And, and what you just said, I want to I wanna point out something more that when we're dealing with these techniques, as you said, it, it, it works with other relationships. Now, when exactly. we're dealing with this scenery, we're talking about partners. So we got to think about seventh house. So I would not recommend to use these techniques for other um, relationships that are uh, signified by other house significators in the chart, specifically like, um, let's say, uh, family or maybe enemies. Uh, you got to go to the seventh house. So I would say this works specifically for romantic relationships, professional relationships, and platonic relationships that uh, correspond to people who are not represented by other um, bawa karkas or or significators of other houses. So yeah, definitely, without a doubt. And and this is a great technique. I mean, this is something, as as I have understood, right? Uh, This is something that's been used in India for a while. Mm-hmm. for marrying people and and i've i've used it with my clients and the thing is that usually clients that come to me are for uh boyfriend girlfriend they, they don't get married i hope someday i get that chance but I, i've seen that they do work but once again they work from the traditional perspective the idea of having uh the best possibilities uh in order to have a long-lasting marriage and a happy marriage mm-hmm. and thanks for sharing all that with us we're going to go into a powerpoint and do you want to tell people a little bit about, um, can you explain each of oh, sure. the uh, three doshas that we're going to talk about over time? Sure. We don't need to go into depth with them, but oh, if sure. you could maybe explain it to people so they could understand it. from a Sure. So uh, today we're going to be discussing Rayu dosha. For those who do not know, dosha means flaw. Uh, dosha also means uh, fault, right? Uh, Rayu means rope. So basically, when we talk about Rayu dosha, we're talking about the flaw of the rope. Uh, the rope flaw or the blemish of the rope or the rope blemish. And that's the one we're going to talk today. And the other two that we uh, will discuss later on are Veda Dosha, which is basically the flaw of not connecting, right? And Stridirga, which refers to the idea of how male energy and female energy mesh from a traditional perspective. And these uh, three can represent significant obstacles in relationships if we have them uh, in a negative way in terms of the grades that we get from the synastry. Uh, and also we have here the special connection, which would be a bonification, which is Mahendra. Mahendra from the traditional text uh, allude to the idea of uh, the potential for a long lasting relationship. Right. Uh, special some, connection. Yeah. Exactly. Have, some yeah. people, Exactly. Some people if recently say that it's like this uh, soul mate or twin flame uh, factor. Some people say that, but from the books that I've read, it, it alludes more to the idea of having the necessary things for a long lasting relationship. So yeah. today we're going to be discussing Ryu of all these four. Do you, um, so are there any exceptions to Raju, Tosha? Uh, yes. As I said before, Raju, okay, this is something very important. This is the disclaimer. If you have Raju Dosha, you are not going to break up. Uh, not it's necessarily not the end doomed. Of, right. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's exactly. not the end of the world. Uh, uh, I mean, you, sh- you should not freak out. Remember, you have to see the whole from 
a holistic perspective, right? Mm -hmm. There's Rayu Dosha is just one factor of many that you have to take into consideration uh, when it comes uh, to the time of saying, will this work or will this not work? So besides Rayu, you have to see the other doshas, you have to see the bonifications, you have to see the ashtakuta, you have to see the timing uh, within the charts of yeah, each person. Exactly. So That's very so, important. I think that gets overlooked quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you have to look for a lot of factors to really have a comprehensive idea. So if you have Rayu Dosha, yeah, you're going to have it, but it's not the end of the world. So that's something I have to say. That that said, if you have Rayu Dosha and you have other things going on for you, for example, like here, I, I'm just reading the, the, the PowerPoint here. If you have other measurements like Rahamaitri, Tarawala, uh, I'm sorry, Tara, Tarakuta or Mahendra, then you have bonifications that will help you through the potential obstacle that the dosha might bring. Okay. Yeah, it, right. it will tend to alleviate it somewhat. The more of them yes. you have, the better. Yeah. Yes. For example, we just discussed Mahendra, which is the bonification. Uh, Tara uh, Kuta is basically the measurement of stars. That's how it would relate. But it, it relates to the idea of things happening at the right time. That idea of that magical thing of of just things that happen when they have to happen. And Graha Maitri is more or less the chemistry within the relationship. So if you have those things going on, then, you know, the, the, the Rayu Dosh is just going to be a small obstacle that is going to be easily uh, uh, beaten, just like, you know, uh, a trained athlete will just train through certain obstacles in his daily routine and so on and so forth. And just so everybody knows, like in the last video that we do, perhaps we're going to go over these particular exceptions because they'll, they'll surface over and over again uh, throughout the um, the different factors that we're going to look at. Do you want to, are you ready to get to go into Raju sure. specifically? Yeah, yeah. yeah the, there are five types of Rayu that we're going to, ah, they're, here they are. We have, why, don't we, uh, why don't we go go back and forth? Yeah, you do one, I do one, you do one, I do one. Oh, sure. Do, do you want to cool. start? No, you go first. Okay, so Rayu Dosha has basically five types uh, and they allude to the idea, okay, Rayu Dosha alludes to this, the following idea. You divide all the 27 nakshadras into five groups, okay? And those are the five types. If you and your partner have the same Janma nakshatra, I mean, I'm sorry, have ja, both have Janma nakshatras that are in the same group, then you have Rayu Dosha. So, right. Let's say, so for, for instance, example, if somebody had Ashlesha and Ashwini. They have Rayu Dosha of the Pala type, which is the yeah. feet type. Correct. Yeah. And if you have Pushya or Pushyami and you have Anurada, then you have Rayu Dosha of the hip type. Now, if you have Danishta, Yanmanakshatra, and you have Revati Yanmanakshatra, then you don't have Rayu Dosha because Revati is in the feet group and Danishta is in the head group. So I hope people understand that. It's very simple. So basically there are five types of um, Rayu Doshas and each one will present a situation. Now, as I said before, Rayu Dosha is the blemish of the rope. And what this entails is that whenever this is present in the relationship, there will, uh, there will be the potential for strong codependency. There will be a potential for toxicity within the relationship. And at the same time, it's the idea of relationships staying together because of bad things. So the idea of Rayu Dosha is like a rope tying people together. I sometimes explain to clients, it's like the devil card from the uh, uh, Pamela Smith, uh, from the Rider Waite Pamela Smith tarot deck where you have the devil with the two people chained, but if you see the chains, they're not tight. So Rayu Dosha is the idea of having a rope around your, your head that is not necessarily tight. You can take it off whenever you like, but you like it because it creates codependency and hence creates some sort of toxicity. And there are five types of these situations. Now, I must allude to the idea that uh, Rayu Dosha, in my opinion, is, is not as bad as uh, uh, Vedha Dosha. Exactly. And, and it's not uh, as, uh, I mean, it, the, the, the most um, difficult dosha is Veda dosha. The second one would be Rayu. Exactly. And the third would be Shridirga or the absence of Shridirga, better said. And maybe the fourth would be Mangal dosha, but Mangal, you know, you got to take that with a grain of salt. So I must say that. So do you want to, you want to tell people why, why to take Mangal dosha with a grain of salt? Because yes. as I'm sure you do, I get flooded with people talking about that being present in their horoscope and you end up saying things to them over and over again. Do you want to provide our viewers oh, sure. with a little bit of insight on that? 
Excellent. For example, you touched upon it uh, later, uh, before we, uh, a while ago. I mean, when you said about the marriage counselor, you know, when, when you said that if you have problems in the relationship, uh, taking as a point of reference the synastry, then the counselor will tell you, get married so he can have uh, more money from the sessions. It's the same thing with these doshas. It's the same thing. I mean, if, if people use this idea of mangal dosha as the end of the world because they want to have their businesses, they want to have their astrology sessions, they want you to buy remedies, pujas, uh, you got to do tapas, all that. You know, it's it, mangal dosha, you got to take it with a grain of salt because, first of all, there are different opinions about it, there are different cancellations about it. And usually, you know, there's a debate about. For example, Mangal Dosha, it's the 12th, the 2nd, the 4th, the 7th, or the 8th. Some people say it's the Ascendant also. Some people say it's not the Ascendant. And the idea that you got to be Manglic with a Manglic and non-Manglic with non-Manglic. And if you have a non-Manglic with a Manglic, there are going to be problems. I mean, you got to take that with a grain of salt because there are very conflicting reports about it. And, you know, I usually do it from the Lagna. Other people do it from Lagna, Moon, and Sun. And you got to combine them. Then you're going to have, you're going to have six uh, calculations. If you just do it from one uh, lagna, then you're just going to have uh, two. Uh, so you, you got to take that with a grain of salt because also Mangal or Kuya Dosha is not based on the Janmanakshata. It is based more in the ascendant and the positions of, of the Kundli in terms of the natal positions. So, so for, for people who may not be familiar with what Kuja is, do you want to tell them? Sure. Uh, yeah. Kuja is Mars. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. It's a position of Mars in your chart and Excellent. how it relates to the other person's chart, uh, the other person being the other person in the relationship. So, you know, Kuya Dosha, Mangal Dosha, it might have an effect. I'm not saying it doesn't, but, you know, I wouldn't consider it, uh, I, I would consider first these Doshas before Mangal Dosha. Or Myself, Kuya dosha. yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, I, we, we explained that. So. Um, I also want to say that in before we go to the five categories, that in my experience, what I have found dealing with, you know, the type of clients I deal with, which are usually on the younger side, I've seen that when Rashu Dosha is present, uh, the idea of drugs, the idea of illegal stuff of, or substance abuse or alcohol, illegal stuff is present somehow in the relationship. Why do you think so, that is? Uh, because it creates the scenario for codependency, toxicity. It creates the scenario for a relationship that is together because of bad things. Because for me, Rayu Dosha is, is just having, you know, uh, chemistry within a situation which is not helpful or positive. <laughs> you know what I mean? And sometimes it's, it's karma. Sometimes it's just karma that you have yes. to complete with the person. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I've Definitely. encountered that before too. Definitely. And, so and, actually, and actually it's perfect because I'll share that story when we get to the one on hip. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So that's, that's something that I have to say. And that's basically my, my introduction. So let's, let's start. So first we have, uh, as you can see, there are five categories. There are different parts of the body. Uh, do not associate them to the Kala Purusha because you, you are going to get confused. Just think about it in terms of metaphor. Feet, hip, neck, navel, and head. Okay? So basically, we start with the feet, and you have the five Yanmanakshatras here, Ashwini, Ashlesha, Maga, Yeshta, Mula, and Revati. So if you have your Yanmanakshatra, one of these uh, uh, six, and your partner has one of these six nakshatras also as a yanma nakshatra, then you have uh, the rayu dosha of the feet. And what this entails, uh, by the way, this is called pala uh, rayu uh, dosha in, um, in, in India. And basically, if you have this one, uh, you will be destined to have problems with wandering. I associate this with the idea of the space, right? It's the idea of being destituted or dispossessed there are also ideas of having long-term relationships, the idea of uh, a partner not being present 
in the relationship or long or long distance relationships, that sort of thing. It's the idea of just being dispossessed or having difficulty in terms of where you live or always traveling, situations where you're kind of nomadic or one of the partners is kind of nomadic. And as you know, that it represents difficulties from the traditional point of view in terms of what a relationship should be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because with the next one, which was what I was going to do, which is the hips, and I'll go into that here in a moment, I've actually experienced a very similar thing with the whole concept of, of, of wandering, so to speak. So let's go into uh, talking about what creates Raju at the hip. So that's when your uh, natal moon and that of your partners is either in Barani, uh, Pusha, also known as Pushami, uh, Purva Falguni, Anuradha, uh, Purva Ashada, and Uttara Bhadrapada. Uh, then if you both have your uh, Janma or uh, lunar nakshatras uh, placed in one of those nakshatras, then you're joined together at the uh, hip. And it's stated in the classical text, if there's Raju in the hips, there will always be poverty. And if you think about it, the hips are, are where our reproductive system is. And so it's difficult for the, each party to mutually infuse the connection with their creative potential, so to speak. I put the term here, their goals for themselves and the relationship never get the juice that is needed. So one partner might have a creative desire to take their life in a certain way and the other partner either cannot support that with their own creative energy or they, they won't support it. They're not able to support each other's goals, um, mutual or individual. And um, you know, I'm a divorced man and actually the relationship that I was in, we had Raju at the hip. And, and it was definitely just like this. I had different goals. There were, was somewhere different that I wanted to take um, you know, my life and somewhere different that they wanted to take their life. Interestingly enough, we have a child together. And so there's, there's a connection that's here and the connection is something that, that has meaning. And luckily we've gotten to a space where you know, there's enough separation. <laughs> There's enough separation. There, there could be more. Um, but it's, it's much like what it says here. There's poverty because each person, while they're staying uh, with the other person, the thing that would naturally flow in their life that might take them in the direction that would create more fulfillment uh, for them, if we're looking at poverty in terms of uh, financial poverty, that thing cannot get supported. They're holding themselves back from being from being who they are, from their natural creative expression. Uh, that also equates with, uh, for a certain, on a certain level with spiritual poverty, the person's not being uh, true to their inspiration and true to their uh, creative expression in that particular instance. So the two parties can't support each other uh, in their goals. Sometimes it's less a thing of not, of not wanting to. Sometimes I found it's more a thing with, you know, other people that I've looked at with this in their horoscope, it's a thing of just, it naturally doesn't gel together in that particular capacity. Hmm. True. So um, I'm going to continue. I, I, I would like to talk about the navel first. And yeah, then go for it. Because that, that would be the, the correct anatomical order. Can, so, can I say yeah. something before you do that? There's something yeah. that's really interesting to me that, uh, that Kritika is connected to the navel. Because I've always referred, because Kritika brings nourishment because it's connected to Agni, which is Agni. Uh, the connection yep. to fire. But also because of Kritika being connected to the, uh, the Pleiades, the seven sisters, one of the seven sisters is married to uh, Druva, the pole star, right? And I've often equated Kritika energy with a cosmic umbilical cord that's bringing nourishment down to the individual and sometimes it gets stymied and the person has to purify those things that are keeping them from receiving the uh, universal nourishment. So I just found it interesting that this is, uh, this is one of the, the uh, nakshatras that's connected to the navel. I'm gonna correct a misspell, there we go. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's also funny because it, it, you just talked about an umbilical cord and basically as we're gonna see in the navel, uh, Rayu Dosha, which it's called uh, Navi, uh, Navi, uh, Navi Rayu Dosha, 
uh, basically alludes to the idea of having difficulties with children. And, and usually what do you do when a child is born? You take the ax or you take a knife from Critica, right? And you cut the umbilical cord when, yeah. when the yeah. baby's born. So you have that also there. Uh, but that's, that's a good, that's, a, that's an interesting thought, you know. Uh, the idea of, of how you know the Pleiades relates to the to the Sapta Rishis, which are basically exactly. That, exactly. the idea of, of yeah. the North Star that is within the the uh, how do you say it in English the the Big Dipper, right? Yeah, exactly. So basically, navel. If you have your Janma Nakshatra, the natal Nakshatra of the Moon in Kritika, Punar Vasu Utara Falguni Vishaka Utara Ashada or Purva Badrapada and your partner has the same um, Janmana Chatra in one of these, then you have the Rayu Dosha of the navel. And what that entails is difficulty with children, more or less, right? Uh, basically, it can also uh, allude to the idea of having difficulty in terms of creativity, children, think about the fifth house. You know, it's very interesting because both the hips and the navel Rayu Dosha present situations with sex also. Yeah the idea of how both parts are kind of alluded to the reproductive organ, organs according to the Kala Purusha correspondences, the idea of the hips alluding to, you know, you have a little bit of Libra, a little bit of Scorpio, a little bit of Sagittarius, the navel alluding a little bit to Libra, a little bit of, of Virgo, but everything that happens in terms of reproductions happens here, right? Yeah. In terms of the hips, as you said correctly, it alludes to what you said. In the navel, it alludes to the idea of reproduction of the children. Now, remember, yeah. from the traditional perspective, a marriage, one of the main goals of marriage was to have children. That was one of the main goals from the Vedic perspective. Actually, in, in that time, you couldn't carry on the family name, correct. which was very important. You couldn't carry on the, the legacy of the family. If the, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and not only that, the profession. If you didn't have exactly. children, yes. you, would, the profession, you would die of hunger. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yes. Actually, you, you read Brihat Parashara Horashastra, and one of the last chapters is the idea of, of the curse of not having children and, yeah. and what natal chart will show that. So basically, when you have the navel type of Rayu Dosha, there will be difficulty with children. Now, the texts say the children will die. We're going to see this with the next two also. When it says when it says something will die, it's not. it does not necessarily allude exactly. to the idea that the children will die. Remember, these texts were not written for the layman. They were not written for the... Uh, uh, the peasants for the serfs. This was written for a small clique, a small group of initiates. And they were not thinking about being sensitive about the way they wrote. And yes. at the same time, a lot of things might have get, got lost in translation. But the idea is that uh, when the, it says the children will die, it probably means that you're going to have problems with your children. Maybe they're going to be, I don't know, autistic, ADD. They're going to have difficulty in school. They're going to be bullied. They're going to be bullies. Uh, things that you create have some, together, yeah. Correct. Just, They're yeah, going to have yeah. some health problems, social problems, whatever it is, something with the children might come up. So that or that you're not going to have children. Point. Uh, I mean, that yeah. that's that's something that can also I've happen seen that here. before, too. Yes. Yeah. So and, and that's the thing, uh, Michael, that when you have partners that want to have children and you see their natal chart and you see that there's karma for difficulties with children, and they want to have children, but you see that they're not having children because the chart shows it, then you start understanding the karmic repercussions of having these doshas, these flaws, these faults alluding to children. You're not having children because you're not supposed to have them. Now, if you have them, they might express difficulties precisely because these significators are present. So shall we move on to uh, Raju sure. at the neck? Yeah. Yeah, okay. neck and head. Exactly. So when we uh, look at Raju in the neck, that's created when um, both parties have a, uh, their lunar nakshatra, their janma nakshatra in one of the following, which are Rohini, Ardra, Hasta, Swati, Shravana, and Shatabisha. And so it's said about Raju in the neck that the wife will die. Mm. There's generally within the partnership, there's a lack of a capacity to either feel comfortable uh, with the available options that are there on like the day-to-day -day basis. Like, you know, like, so for instance, where should we go on vacation? 
<laughs> right? So what will generally happen is the uh, partner who's playing the uh, feminine role in the relationship will generally not feel good about the option. So where are we going to go on vacation? Oh, well, why, I think we should go to uh, the Bahamas or I think we should go to Spain. Well, I want to go to Tahiti. <laughs> right? And so it, it makes it so that the, the woman feels that the, the, the options that are there that are available to her, none of them are options which she wants to kind of take on, right? Which then makes it difficult for the masculine in the relationship as well, because things that he's presenting uh, to the situation just ultimately will seem like, uh, like doomed. And he'll likely go, well, you know, I can't, I can't satisfy, I can't satisfy her. None, none of the options I present to her are good. He may also occasionally feel like a failure himself because he feels like he's not able to give options uh, to his partner, which are going to allow her uh, to feel fulfilled on the inner level, makes her feel like she doesn't have the choices that she wants or the things that she wants are not able to be fulfilled. And then he feels like he's ultimately failing. Uh, her as a partner. If you think of it in terms of when your necks are tied together, right? Mm -hmm, you you mm -hmm. can't turn your head. You can't turn your head. You can't see anything, anything else. You can only see straight ahead at, you know, uh, maybe there's one thing that's being put into the equation that's agreed about. That's the only choice they have. And maybe that's the worst possible choice, yeah. right? Yeah. So shall we move on to the head? Yeah, the head is basically the same as the neck. The only thing is that it applies to men. So the head, if you have your Yanmanakshatra in Migrashira, Shitra, or Danishta, and your partner also has their Yanmanakshatra in Migrashira, Shitra, or Danishta, then you're going to have the Rayu Dosha of the head that is also called Shiro Rayu eh, Dosha. So basically, it's the same thing that you said. Uh, instead of the female part of the relationship being affected, this time is the male part. So from a traditional perspective, this alludes to the idea of the husband having difficulties. Uh, usually this uh, arises from the idea of a strong female partner, the idea of a female partner that does not let the masculine role uh, manifest itself as it should. And in a relationship, the masculine role should lead and the feminine role should be uh, led, right? So uh, this alludes to the idea of uh, the man having difficulties in the relationship. The idea of not being able to do what he has to do, to fix what he has to fix, to create what he has to create, and the female part uh, doing uh, all the things the male should do. Uh, it kind of alludes the neck and the head, uh, Rayu Doshas, a little, a little bit to the idea of Sri Dirga to a certain degree, because it has to do with the idea of the female and the male manifesting itself in the relationship. So in, in this type of relationship, as, as you said, uh, you know, uh, as I said before, I'm sorry, it says that the husband will die. That doesn't mean that he's going to die. What it means is that the husband will be unhappy, just like in the neck, Rayudosha, the wife will not die. The wife will be unhappy, Right. So this is one of the reasons why I said at the beginning that when you have Rayu Doshas, there is the possibility of substance abuse, drugs, alcohol, because that's the way people cope with these situations. The idea of, of not being happy as a husband, not being happy as a wife, not being happy because you can't have children, not being happy because you're poor, not being happy because you have sex problems, not being happy because you are destitute, that sort of thing. But so so people, head, just a second, just so people understand, yeah. it doesn't mean that you have to have drug problems. Oh, yeah, sure. Right? Just oh, so definitely. people understand that it doesn't mean that you're definitely going to have that. It just means that there's a propensity to, you know, want definitely. to check out maybe of the relationship. Yeah, check out. Yeah. That's basically yeah. what I mean. Yeah, that yeah. check out and, and check out through drugs or that sort of thing or check out through other sort of, of, of things you, get, you can do to avoid uh, avoid these uh, serious problems, right? But once again, uh, this is only serious if there, if there is confluence of different factors that will contribute to the sabotage of the relationship. 
So basically, that's that's about it. That's what I can tell you about the the head wound. It's basically the same as the neck one, but it applies more to the man than to the woman. So let's go into the inevitable question, <laughs> which we will be answering in the comments section at the very okay. bottom. Okay, okay. And and there are good things to go into. Let's talk about um, the concept of masculine and feminine. Okay? Oh, sure. I, I have actually seen it. So, you know, any any relationship that you get into, if you want to define the role in your own individualistic way, sure, that that's, that's fine. Uh, people are um, of different natures inside of themselves. Temperance, so often, yes. Yeah, exactly. Quite often you can have same-sex relationships. These can equally play into those. Sometimes you will have women who tend to be more masculine and the men who tend to be more feminine. But when you're getting into those particular concepts, there's a need to define the roles very clearly. So if you're yes. not defining the roles, <clears throat> you know, if you're not, if it's not understood that like maybe if the woman is the one who is the, uh, the breadwinner and she's going out and working every day. And the man is the one who's staying at home with the children because sometimes that does happen. Yes. Those roles have to be defined, but we also have to understand that there are um, things that are chemical, chemistry within the body, uh, like natural uh, tendencies that tend to happen uh, masculine bodies uh, produce uh, testosterone. Uh, you know, feminine bodies uh, produce uh, progesterone and estrogen. And that's just natural being born into a certain body. Sure, you can argue that uh, some women may produce less of that and some men may produce less testosterone. And so those things just naturally happen. But if it's a uh, relationship between a man and a woman, myself, I'm not really saying that you have to behave this way in, in your relationship, but it's more a thing of recognizing that if a partner isn't able to be who they are naturally in the connection, there's ultimately gonna be problems. Within yeah, the definitely. relationship, definitely. You see, and and that's something that's very important to understand. And much like what what it says here about you know Raju in the head and um, Raju in the neck, <clears throat> there are specific uh, reasons why in masculine feminine connections these things are that way. Uh, which is if you take into concept uh, the concept of the egg and the sperm, okay? So the egg has to feel good about its, its options of the, pardon the language, everybody, of, of a sperm, and it, it's, it's just language, it's natural, right? Of mm -hmm. the sperm that's going to impregnate it. It has to feel good about that options. Definitely. That option, so that's the reason for, you know, the wife will die. Uh, in the head, that's, that's the masculine, that's the sperm that's being able to commit, it's being able to, pick a direction and stick with that direction and fulfill that direction. And if it's difficult for the man in the connection to feel that his decisions or his capacity to make a decision and stick with it isn't being honored, then that can create some difficulties for the relationship. And equally, you know, if a woman is feeling like she's not being given options in the situation, but is instead meant to always just kind of go, it, it has to be this particular direction, that can be a problem too. So ultimately that's how those problems with the, well, multitudes of problems can come into relationships in terms of the head and neck though, which is what we're talking about in this particular scenario. That's one of the ways that, um, that it can play out. Do you wanna offer some, some thoughts on that too? Well, I yeah. just want to say that that for a relationship to work, there has to be complementation. There has to be exactly. a passive yes. and an active. Exactly. We see this all around us every day in nature. Yin yang. Yep. Yin yang, prakriti and purusha, night and day, sun and moon, even alpha the polarities. Animal you know, and the, and the non-alpha animal. 
Yeah, yeah. And, and we also see that in the polarities of electricity, negative and positive. You see that with the elements. You see the idea of fire and air being masculine. You see the idea of earth and, and water being feminine. You know, it's the idea that in a relationship, there has to be complementation. Exactly. And the traditional perspective is that men behave in a way and women behave in a way. Now, there is a possibility of feminine men and, and masculine women. Now, masculine women should look for feminine men and feminine men should look for masculine women. It's being clear if, about if they, roles. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, about and, and, and in, doing. yeah and in homosexual relationships, serious homosexual relationships, may mm. I add, uh, mm. you see that also. You see a passive and an active. Both and in it's women just and a men. natural thing. Yeah. Exactly. And when they are not like that, you start seeing problems, both in heterosexual and homosexual relationships. Exactly. And that's but why we have these trying to be They're trying yeah. to be the, um, that uh, active in the other, and both are trying to be the passive, then it, Correct. Then it doesn't work. Because Problems. there's no direction, you see? Correct. There's no, there's no, think of it in simple terms of like, uh, of nature in terms of sperm and egg. There's no yin and yang. There's no night and day. When there's no night and day, you your sense of direction is lost. I, I just want to say, and, and this is something that is my opinion. I don't think I don't think Michael has to necessarily subscribe to it, but you have to remember that the idea of 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 sex, and, and by that I don't mean like sex, like having sex, but the idea of sex, not gender, because gender is something modern that came up. A few decades ago, gender uh, ap applies mainly to literature, to poetry, to novels, that sort of thing. That's sort of a, a new invention that came up in the 20th century. But sex per se is not a social construct. Sex per se alludes to certain universal archetypical energies and laws that abound in the universe. So these are not things that are, you know, uh, that are uh, deconstructible, that can you know, work around. No, they exist now. Some men are feminine, some women are masculine. Some men are masculine and some women are feminine. And you have to see how these energies coalesce. Interlock, if you, yes. E exactly, to yeah. see if they're gonna be successful or not in a relationship. Because in the end, what you wanna, wanna have is a working, long lasting relationship, if your goals are that. If right? you're also that. And some people yeah. are just going, hey, I just want to learn exactly. through relationship and learn about <laughs> life. Because that's also another path, too, is yeah. and, and what happens, we go, oh, this video is going to take us 10, 15 minutes, and we'll end up going for like, you know, <laughs> for an hour, because it always happens that way. Yeah. But you know, so so generally our experience of existence and our experience of consciousness really on a certain level is is intercourse. It's a relationship. It's a relationship. And it, so there's also that approach, which is going, hey, I'm, I'm in relationships because there's something I have to gain from it. So Definitely. yeah, sure. I'm going to be joined with this person at the hip. Bring it on. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I've kind of, you know, um, not able to move very well and, uh, and my wallet's empty, but hey, you're basically I, like, I got, some, I got something out there. I got Siamese twins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so sometimes it, it can be about that. I often tell people too, because quite often, um, and this has been a big thing for me, and I know it's off the topic of, uh, of compatibility, but I just find it's, it's a really important concept, which is quite often when people look at Ketu and Rahu in the horoscope, there's this uh, tendency I find for people to want to tell the client, you need to go do Rahu. You just need mm. to go do Rahu. Mm. And I've actually found that's not always the case that I found some people who are, I find quite often you'll be in a period in life where K2 is meant to predominate because I there's agree. something that the person's meant to integrate. Uh, there's a period in life where Rahu is meant to predominate because the person's meant to be going and exploring. And I also find there are some horoscopes where that Rahu energy will just be stronger. And those are the types of people who just like to go into life full experience, passionate, bring it on. I may end up with like, you know, broken bones <laughs> and other things somewhere down the line, but at least I've lived my life passionately. And some people that's, that's truly where they are. And so there's no set approach to life in the horoscope. There's the individual, their soul, their path and the road that they're meant to walk. 
and not necessarily the, uh, the right path, the wrong path for the individual. Each person's uh, dharma is very individualistic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So Fernando, do you want to tell people how they can find you if they want to schedule a reading with you and oh, i'll yeah. put your link down down below in the video too once sure I sure I, I have a youtube channel my um, the, the vast majority of my videos are in spanish and the vast majority of my of my uh clientele is in spanish but i have a a, a website uh, fernando raul astrology.com and i do offer a a synastry uh offer it's offer number five and I use these techniques along other techniques from Hellenistic astrology to guarantee good compatibility. Excellent. Thank you. And if you're interested in scheduling with me, uh, I'll also post the link uh, down below in the video. And also, if you want to learn more about the nakshatras, you can do that through my online academy. And thanks a lot, Fernando, for coming on. I'm looking forward to the next one. What do you want to talk about next time? We Which should talk about Bedha Dosha, right? Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. I agree. All Thank right. you. Thank you, Thanks, Michael, everybody. for inviting me. And take care. Bye -bye. Thanks for coming on.